Hey guys, it's Mikhail Lewis here and for 2021, I'm going to be a lot more consistent with my videos, hopefully, but the topic for today is all about genetics. And before you watch, if you could leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment on a topic you'd like to see and I would happily cover that topic in one of my future videos. There's so many different genetic factors that come into play in terms of how your body develops over time and I'm just going to go through a select few which I think is very important to raise awareness to my fellow kings and queens because I love y'all. So there's four different genetic factors I'm going to speak about. The first one is going to be about genetic structure. The second one is going to be about muscle shape and insertions. The third one is going to be about muscle building genetics and the fourth one is going to be about body composition genetics. Number one, genetic structure. Our bone structure is the underlying framework for the physique in which we can build. A nice metaphor to describe this. All houses have frameworks, skeleton frameworks in which exterior coverings are thrown on afterwards and all houses come in different sizes and shapes. The same thing applies to human beings to the fact that we all have underlying bone structures in which we are born with and we simply can't change it. So there's good structure for bodybuilding and I guess you could say it's bad structure for bodybuilding but all bodies are beautiful. I'm all for body positivity but when it comes to bodybuilding there's always going to be good structure and bad structure. So what good structure looks like is when someone has wide cal calvicles and have a small waist. So let's say you were to draw, draw a geometric line from your shoulders down to your hips and it has like a Dorito shape, that is what good structure looks like. An example, at the top of my head, I have a guy I have on Instagram, his name is called, I know his first name is Bonnie. I know he goes by Bonnie Fitness on Instagram and his waist is so tiny and his calvicles are so wide that it gives him that Dorito shape and that's the shape that you'd want to bodybuild. Someone with average structure genetics would be someone with just simply like a wide waist. And as I said, you're born with this, so you can't really change it. And if you were to draw a geometric shape from their shoulders down to their hip joints, you would get kind of like a, a square shape. And the only thing they could possibly do to make to get that taper look is to just train your shoulders and your lats. If you could get a thick, wide upper body, you could create that illusion of having a small waist. And an example at the top of my head is, um, he goes by Omar Isof on Instagram. No, not hating on him or anything. He has a great physique, but at the end of the day, if you look at him, it's there's not much of a difference from his his waist to his shoulders. Number two, the genetics of muscle shape and insertions. So for all skeletal muscles, Tendons connect to bones and muscles connect to tendons. And at each site, at each particular site on your body, the muscles, there's always going to be muscles that connect to tendons. An example at the top of my head is your bicep. So for your bicep, there's your tendon that connects to your elbow and your tendon that connects to your shoulder. And then there's the muscle belly. Some people have a shorter muscle belly and some people have a longer muscle belly. If you have a shorter muscle belly, that means you have longer tendons. And if you have a a longer muscle belly that means you have shorter tendons so for someone with a shorter muscle belly and longer tendons they're gonna have a better bicep peak than someone with a longer muscle belly and shorter tendons an example at the top of my head is arnold i'm not even gonna say his last name because i'm i'll butcher it so hard but i think said peaks were phenomenal and an example for someone with not so great bicep insertions and shape would be um, Simon Panda. Not hating on him. He has a great physique, great biceps. But at the end of his, at the end of the day, his bicep peak is not going to look as good as Arnold. The third factor is muscle building genetics. So there's many different factors that go into muscle development and growth. There's going to be people out there who are going to build muscle way easier than you can, and you just can't change that. You just got to live with it. Even if you do the controllable factors, right, such as how you live, which is, I guess, your lifestyle, how you eat, how you train, there's going to be people out there who contribute less to these factors and they're still going to be able to build more muscle than you can. And that's, as I said, that's unfortunate. 
What you could do is just blame your parents, I guess. Even if you do the controllable factors, right, such as your lifestyle, how you eat, how you train, there's going to be people out there who contribute way less to these factors and they're still going to be able to build more muscle than you can due to the uncontrollable factors which are your genes. Your natural testosterone level definitely has a part to play in muscle building but at the same time I would say it's not that important and the reason why I say that is because someone with a lower testosterone level than you could probably build more muscle than you so don't place much, much emphasis in what your natural testosterone level is and guys stay natty another factor that comes into play is what your muscle fibers are made of so the general label for what muscle fibers are made of is either fast twitch muscle fibers or slow twitch muscle fibers fast twitch muscle fibers are generally for speed power and strength and slow twitch muscle fibers are generally for endurance however fast twitch muscle fibers tend to grow at a much faster rate than slow twitch muscle fibers. So someone who's made up of fat, made up of more fast twitch muscle fibers are probably going to build mu muscle much faster than someone with slow twitch muscle fibers. Another factor under muscle building genetics is how responsive your body is to resistance training. Some people respond and adapt really well to resistance training and some people don't. So for muscle building genetics, I'm going to use myself for an example here. So after a year and a half of training, I would say I put on around 18 to 20 pounds of muscle. And if I could think of someone with bad muscle genetics or bad muscle building genetics, I could think of Max Trunin. I don't know if you all follow him. He's a popular fitness influencer on Instagram. And if you look at his progress, he, he put on muscle, but... His genetics for putting on muscle isn't that great. No offense to him and no heat. He, he, what he does, he does well. So the fourth factor is body composition genetics. And I'm not going to get into this one too much. But all I'm going to say is that there's people out there who walk around at a lower body fat percentage. And additionally, there's people who hold body fat proportionally throughout their body. So it gives it that illusion of them not being at a higher body fat percentage. At the top of my head, I could think of David Lead. This guy, he he basically walks around at such a low body fat percentage throughout the year. And I even think his the way he stores body fat in his body, it's it's proportion it's proportional throughout his body. So even when he may be at a higher body fat percentage, from the naked human eye, you can't really tell. However, most men hold their body fat in their abdomen region and for women, most women hold their fat in their lower body region. When it comes to myself, I hold most of my fat in my chest region, which I think is a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because when I'm lean, it gives me that illusion of having a big chest. But when I'm at a higher body fat percentage, I'm speaking like maybe like 16 to 20%. It almost looks like I have man boobs, which I'm not a fan of. So I'm never going to get at a high body fat percentage again it's just not my thing and uh, yeah guys and yeah guys and yeah guys that's it for today if you enjoyed let me know this is a great topic covering and if you're not blessed with these good genetics for bodybuilding don't worry about it you just have to work twice as hard as someone with good genetics and don't get discouraged guys thank you for watching if you made it this far say something like say hello in the comment section and i will know you're a real one thank you for watching and see you in the next video peace